I question the original vision because my first reaction when I heard about the project is, okay, a high-speed train from San Francisco to Los Angeles, that's not my problem. I don't have a problem getting to San Francisco. I get there quite easily and quite cheaply and quite quickly on Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. My problem is getting to work. So let's kind of start in the beginning, the original vision of this. What problem was it really solving? Uh, well, you had a lot of affluent uh, Californians who vacation in Europe, and when they're in Europe, they take a bullet train, and they think, oh, this is cool. I would like to have this in California. And really, I, it, it sounds amazing, but I was talking with the Democratic Club uh, a couple of years ago, and I asked how many people support, uh, how many people have been to Europe or uh, Japan and ridden your the, we're in the bullet train and in like half the hands went up and I said, how many of you voted for it because you'd like to see that here? And they all went, all the hands went up at the same time. So I think that pe people who are tourists in Europe, uh, which clearly not the working class, middle class people in California, went there and saw it and they, they thought this is something we should have here. And the offer was, well, we could get between San Francisco and LA in two hours and 20 minutes. That was the uh, requirement in the Bond Act. And uh, I don't know that anybody really did enough analysis of over how hard that would be, you know, financially to achieve, um, technically, um, socially, politically, legally, all those things um, were, became much more difficult because of that speed requirement. Mm -hmm. So the concern over large governments, um, large government projects is kind of borne out to be correct because this project has turn, turned out to go uh, figuratively off the rails with the explosion of the cost estimates um, and the fact that it doesn't even look like the high speed is going to be able to be achieved. It's gone off the rails because the cost has spiraled up. So you have to ask, well, has the cost spiraled up because they underestimated what it was going to cost in any case, or have they mismanaged it uh, over the last half dozen years? And I think clearly they underestimated it at the very outset. Um, just one or two examples, if you would like to know. Originally, they estimated the land acquisitions in the Central Valley would cost $330 million, roughly. Today, it's budgeted as at $1.5 billion. Um, they originally estimated the environmental clearances for the entire project from LA to San Francisco would run a few hundred million, 200 to 300. It's now over a billion. So those are just two good examples of um, how they didn't mismanage anything. They just blew it on, on estimating what uh, an acre of the richest farmland, the m most technologically advanced farmland in the world would cost. And then the federal government jumped on board and provided additional funds. Uh, how many billion has the federal government provided? Uh, the Obama administration provided two grants for a total of $3.5 billion. And is that it, or is there more coming f federally? No, that's it. So, you know, th that's the other question is, what analysis did the federal government do before writing those checks? Well, <clears throat> clearly not enough. Um, the federal government, the Department of Transportation, and within it, the Federal Railroad Administration, were advocating for high-speed rail in the country. And there were programs in Texas and Florida that received grants. And, and as those two states looked more closely at the project, they backed out and they gave the money back. They said, we don't want it. We're not gonna go forward with it. And uh, the Obama administration redirected 
some of that money to California. So it got a little bonus from uh, Texas and Florida. Yeah, these were the so-called shovel-ready projects that were going to help get us out of the recession, correct? That's right. Yeah. And I think the Florida train was going to go from Tampa to, to Orlando. That's right. And Florida analyzed it and said, thank you, federal government, but we're not interested in the money. Interestingly enough, uh, there is a fully privatized uh, medium speed rail that's uh, being built and partially operating between Miami and Orlando. Uh, and that's uh, being developed with no state or federal money. It's hmm. been operated about 110 miles an hour. Uh, they decided that speed was adequate to draw people off the road if they could keep the fares low. If you wanted to get from LA to San Francisco by train right now, can you do it? Yeah, with a great deal of difficulty. That's one of the problems. I mean, clearly we could have better passenger rail in this state. Is people, some percentage of people would rather ride the rails. Right now, it would take you somewhere north of eight hours to get from LA to the Bay Area. You'd have to take a bus from Union Station to Bakersfield over the Tehachapi Mountains, and then you might have to do another bus link at some point. Um, so it's uncompetitive. Nobody wants to spend eight hours to get to San Francisco. So perhaps one of the most questionable decisions was to begin work on this without the whole thing, without all the land being acquired, without having the full plans of exactly how they're going to implement the whole thing. They began building, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah, one of the mismanagements, remember we talked about things that they just underestimated at the outset. They didn't have to mismanage anything. But one of the things they did mismanage was issuing the initial contract for constructing 29 miles of rail before they had a single acre, a single half acre, a single foot, square foot of land in hand. So that contract be, was issued and then the contractor, of course, began acquiring heavy duty equipment and, and offices and he just sat idle for years and that became a, a very big source of delay claims for them. Who is that contractor? That's a team led by uh, Tudor Perini. And where are those guys out of? Silmar. Silmar? Yes. Southern California? Yes. And this is a company that's built high-speed rail before? No. They've built highway structures and uh, tunnels and uh, public infrastructure. You know, um, what they're building isn't really, won't have a rail on it. Uh, they're building bridges and viaducts and uh, grade and trenches, which is, you know, pretty typical of transportation infrastructure. Um, a later contractor will come in and install track and signals and electrification. Presumably, yeah. that's the plan anyways. And am I right that that got approved, that initial 27-mile stretch, because they needed to commence construction by a certain deadline to get the federal money? That's what they said, correct. They said, we, we need, we're pressed to get the contract issued so that we can meet the requirements of the grants. Now, but, the, but the grants, sorry, are only three and a half million, three and a half billion? Yes. And I say only, but it's a lot of money, but the total project cost at this point is 77 billion. And there were, a number of senators, including Democrats, who said in the long run, this $3 billion will not be a reason to jump ahead on this project the way we are. Let's, let's proceed with the project and the planning in a rational way and not try to rush this uh, because we want $3 billion. In, in the long run, that won't matter. And that was exactly right. And, and then I also go back to the federal government, though, and you just wonder what kind of checks the federal government has. Why, why didn't they see right through this and say, wait a minute, you guys aren't ready to begin building this thing. We're not going to give you this three and a half billion dollars. Um, I don't know who it is in the federal government that makes it uh, head of the Department of Transportation. 
Yeah, there was actually a Republican who was uh, head of the Department of Transportation. Um, he was formerly a member of Congress, um, and he backed it. And the Federal Railroad Administration uh, officials uh, who were Democratic appointees backed it. Um, and uh, there was, you can second guess it and say, well, obviously they, they didn't do the homework to look and see how ready the state was, but it, it is a big state and we do build a lot of infrastructure here and we have been successful in the, in the distant past. So maybe they well, is, is, uh, is, carry over. Is it fair to say that California was embarking on the most expensive transportation project in the history of American transportation projects? Well, if you call it one project, yes. It, it clearly, it wasn't as expensive as the interstate freeway system, but that's more than one project, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly more expensive than anything I can think of. Um, it's clearly the most expensive infrastructure project of any kind in the state's history. It's far bigger than the state water project, for example.